continuing to uh, compete for jobs. Black Americans are currently unemployed at twice the rate of white Americans, and real average wages are lower today than they were in 1973, which of course was shortly after there was a, a huge green card gusher that happened. Lower wages means an increase in incarceration. And of course, who's going to be paying for all of this? And the answer is, we're all going to be paying for this. Now, uh, Senator Jeff Sessions says, if your goal is to create more stable social conditions, greater access to the middle class, higher unemployment and wage rates, then it is clear that you should stop adding millions more low-skilled workers to the labor market, particularly at a time when automation is steadily reducing demands for workers. So, I mean, my goodness, the writing is there on the wall. We're, we're going to see just some catastrophic future for us as well. If we don't get this under control, who cares if this message isn't really popular uh, with a lot of people? It's something that we need to be concerned about, especially, uh, you know, this next presidential candidate coming in is going to have to be dealing with massive unemployment, as well as the fact that a lot of jobs are moving to automation. And so we have all of these people spending years in school, getting themselves prepared or <laughs> unprepared for the coming workforce. And then there's not gonna be any jobs for them when they get out. A lot of these jobs are going to be automated. Uh, anything that you've got basically pushing pushing buttons, well, say goodbye to, to that job as well. Uh, we're gonna be talking about that a little bit coming up uh, in the next segment. Um, just what are these jobs that robots are going to be stealing and how can you as a human prepare yourself? Uh, what are the type of qualities that that aren't going to be automated? You know, those are the things that we really need to be building upon. But our school system, the way it's been set up over the last decades, at least, is just turning everyone into a society of robots. Can you push the buttons? Can you continue, the, you know, the machine? And that's what we need to dismantle. We need to get back to our humanity and our entrepreneurial spirit uh, as Americans. That's what we need to be doing. We've reached a critical juncture in the globalist program. That's why we're launching Operation Money Bomb 2015. And with the money we raise from this, we will be able to stay on the satellites and get on cable stations across North America, reaching tens of millions of more people right at the time they're receptive and looking for answers. Starting September 16th through the 17th, we're going to broadcast live for what I believe will be the final money bomb that InfoWars ever runs as we prepare to launch to the next and final level of global awareness. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash Money Bomb for all the information. Join us this September 16th and 17th for the 27-hour Money Bomb. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Sam Adams would be incredibly proud of what you've done in defense of human freedom, in defense of true liberty. Well, that was Alex Jones and his call for the money bomb. This one needs to be epic. As you all know, we are 100% crowdfunded by listeners just like you. We are not beholden to Big Pharma. Uh, we're not, you know, we're not like PBS. We don't get any taxpayer public funding and we've never taken out any loans. A lot of people ask, you know, how can you do this? It, it really is because of listeners like like you. Of course, another one of the ways that you guys have helped support this operation all along is uh, through purchasing our products. Uh, one product that I can give my own personal testimony for is the Super Female. Now, when Super Female first came out, I, uh, I started taking it and it was pretty, uh, <laughs> let's just say it definitely worked. But unfortunately, I started taking it right when my boyfriend and I broke up. So these were some, you know, this was some uh, courage and vitality that I kind of didn't really want to be having as a single woman if you catch my drift. I will say, however, it made me very confident. I felt very confident, uh, very sexy. I kind of woke up in the morning saying, wow, you know, I just, it was really nice being able to get out there and turn heads when I would go to the grocery store and everything. So uh, I definitely helped boost my confidence during a very sad point in my life. Um, but you know, I had to kind of stop taking it because it was working a little too well. Uh, but now I am back on the super female that I tell.
Melody, I am back out there. Uh, but another thing, you might have seen an interview that I did with a good friend of mine, actress Emmy Robin. Uh, she's an actress, she's a singer, and she's been helping me um, get back in shape. And she was having some issues uh, with her gallbladder. And so we got her some of the liver shield and she did the, the cleanse, the full cleanse, had tremendous success with that. And she's a relatively healthy young woman, uh, but she was having golf ball size um, things coming, gallstones, I guess, coming out of her gallbladder. And after seeing that, I was really inspired to go ahead and say, let's do this challenge together. Uh, so she and I are going to be doing the deep cleanse this time. She is now working on a movie. Uh, so she won't be able to do this deep cleanse with me until October. But we're going to be doing it together. We're going to be uploading some video tutorials uh, with the deep cleanse. So we want everyone out there, anyone who's interested in taking this deep cleanse challenge or even the liver shield cleanse, uh, go ahead and purchase your products. And then we are going to be doing this together in October, uploading our video tutorials. Deep cleanse is back in stock right now. It's sold out um, in just a few days, the last time we had it out. Um, it's in limited supply, so be sure to get your products now. And um, you can score Deep Cleanse at InfoWarsLife.com. Again, get your products now before it sells out because Emmy, Robin, and I are going to be going on a Deep Cleanse adventure with you, all of our viewers. Now, this the money bomb. Let's get back to this because we are going to have a lot of interviews that you have not seen, never before seen interviews and one of those is an exclusive interview that we did with Larry Nichols obviously Clinton insider he has some bombshell information that he wanted to share only with us and here is a little teaser of what you're going to see uh, on the money bomb coming up this this Wednesday the 16th <laughs> I was there at the beginning, inside the Clinton machine. I saw it all happen, from the corrupt to the absolutely corrupt. And that's when I thought about my father, who was dying of lung cancer. And what he would do if he knew the man I'd become. And then I thought about my daughter. What if the cocaine they were bringing in was to end up getting used by her? I hit my knees that day and asked God to forgive me. I wasn't a good person. I worked in special operations, Central America, South America. I did a lot of bad things. But I hit the bottom that day and said I was going to make up for it. And now, I just want to see these criminals brought to justice and get their just due. Not made president, but put where they belong. In jail. One thing about Hillary, Bill was just a good timing guy. But Hillary, she's an animal. Hillary is the one that I promise you, she pulls the strings. She pulled him in Arkansas, she pulled him in the White House when she was there. First Lady, and my God, if she gets to be president, what you see out here now is going to change. We thought it changed with Obama. That's nothing compared to what's going to happen with Hillary. And I tell you right now, I will stop Hillary. We've gone further than anybody we know of, and that's all we're going to say. And people can ask us a hundred different ways and us from a hundred different directions. And we're just going to leave the ultimate decision up to the American people. I really um, just want everybody to take a deep breath and relax and just, you know, sit back because here they come again. We're going to have to just ride through this as we have so many of these other um, false accusations. All right, and that was just a preview 
of an interview that we're going to be airing in full on the Money Bomb. You can actually re-watch that at the Alex Jones channel. It's called Clinton Insider Tells All, the preview. Now, this is a huge leap of faith we're taking, and we need your support. So be sure to show us the love during the Money Bomb. It's coming up. Wednesday, the 16th, 27 hours. We're all going to be here. I think they're setting up some air mattresses in the back so no one, you know, no one tanks out. We're, we're going live 27 hours. So really looking forward to that. It's my first money bomb. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Now, let's get back into uh, the topics of discussion. I wanted to talk about the irrelevancy of higher education, even in the face of a massive student loan debt crisis. They keep, we're hearing rumblings of a bubble uh, happening that that's going to be the next big bubble to burst. Uh, our economy is a wreck. But let's just talk about what a joke it is, this higher education that they're selling to everyone as a necessity. Uh, basically, I feel like they're just uh, kind of funneling everyone into schools to keep them busy while trying to figure out what they're actually going to be doing with the economy and all the jobs. Um, now, this first article is, is out of Vox, and this is from a tenured professor, uh, Oliver Lee. And it's he says, I have one of the best jobs in academia. Here's why I'm walking away. And he was one of the lucky ones. He was able to get a tenured job right out of university. But now he says he's walking away from it. And no, it's not because of all the libtarded students that he has to deal with, the entitled <laughs> oversensitive students. Uh, it's not that he's an out of touch professor. He says the university system is the problem. The federally backed approach to subsidizing higher education through low interest loans has created perverse incentives with disastrous consequences. And this is the system that must be reformed. So obviously here, uh, he's basically making the argument that if you if you make it harder for students to take out these loans, then you're going to force underperforming private and public universities out of business and for profit universe universities. He's saying this should be barred altogether from getting these federal loans um, because this way you can only charge consumers what they would really be willing to pay for getting questionable services. A lot of people aren't even um, e making $10,000 a year after they graduate some of these schools. And if you if you shrink the easy access to these student loans, universities would be forced to compete on a cost per student basis. Uh, those students that still could afford to pay to attend college would likely focus their studies on subjects with an immediate return on investment. Now, um, basically, the argument is that the, the academy is no longer an investment of time worth making. We all are allotted a very short amount of time to us in this life. Why are we wasting it in higher education when you're seeing now this college scorecard that's just been released um, by the government, and it's it's so bleak. Uh, it's it's basically just showing you that there's people are going to into massive debt, and more than half of hundreds of schools, people that they have um, checked in about ten years later after they graduated, more than half of these people are making less than high school graduates. So. Not only are they saddled with all of this debt, but the schools kind of duped them into thinking that they it was an absolute necessity. Um, and then they're, you know, earning less than high school graduates. Now, this is the college scorecard. It, it's basically a data dump uh, by the U.S. government so that parents uh, can look and see if they're going to be sending their their child to a school you know, what is going to be the return on investment with that? And it's not really very clear. Like I said, it's a data dump. So they're kind of putting the onus on you, the parent, to be able to sift through a lot of these, uh, a lot of this information here. Um, but, but basically, how much money are students borrowing? And then what is that exchange in earnings after graduation? And of course, they were trying for years to get this information out there. Uh, but there was relentless opposition from colleges and universities. And of course, why? Because now that this information is out there, people can see that it's um, it's a racket. And a lot of the issue is, is that what these colleges, because they're being pumped with all this federal money, that's all that's important to them is this front end enrollment. As long as they can get you signed up to take out the loans, they're good. They don't worry about the dropout rate. They don't worry about 
out uh, if you are able to get a job afterward or if you're going to be making low wages and and what the what the rate of you repaying your student loan debt is. They're not worried about that. They're not concerned about that. And that's the big issue uh, with the way that they're getting these taxpayer, this federal funding.